Good morning and welcome to Overbrook United Methodist Church. And the any announcements? I have a couple of announcements. Um, I believe that we have all of the June liturgist, but if anybody would like to sign up for children's message, um, the, the uh, clipboard is in the back. Um, then I also was asked by Diana Supple to make sure that this was announced in church today. Uh, the Appanoose Museum grand opening is today from 1 to 4 p.m. There, um, theme is celebrate pioneer women of Kansas and my mom has her items down there so I don't know are you the only one are you the starting one oh <laughs> she said she might be the only one living <clears throat> but it's from one to four um, at the Appanoose Museum which uh, Lavon what road is Appanoose Museum on I think there's a sign that says Appanoose Grade School and you turn left on that road uh, after, or right before Michigan Valley. Stafford. Um, so if you, um, they're having a food truck, they're having jam sessions, they have somebody every 30 minutes, I think until 3.30 and then it's open jam session. So um, go down there and check it out. And then uh, Vacation Bible School. I got the material. It is going to be a weekend one. Again, it's called Outback Rock. So we're going to Australia. Um, I do have some open uh, positions. We have um, kind of like the storyteller. We have recreation. We have crafts with a purpose or projects with a purpose, I guess it's called. We're going to have that on Saturday, July 20th and Sunday, July 21st. So if anybody would like to help, please let me know. I have the material here today if you're interested in that. Um, otherwise, I don't have any other announcements. Oh, Wanda does. I have a few uh, help house. Now I can't even think what they are. Anyway, Newsletter? newsletters. Yes. Uh, I think I better go back home. Anyway, over here on the table, if anybody would like to hear. It's very short and very straight to the point. Thank you. I would just like to thank everybody for coming yesterday and to help us celebrate my birthday. Love you all. Thank you. And Mary was gracious gracious enough to share her beautiful bouquets that she received. They're up in front of the electric piano. So those are from Mary's birthday party yesterday. The Prelude by Sherry.
Thank you, Sherry. That was very beautiful. I appreciate your musical talent. Please join in the song of gathering in the purple hymnal on number 472, Near to the Heart of Gold. Please join in the call to worship. Let us lift up the name of our God. Let us praise the faithfulness of the Lord. For just as the Lord's greatness fills the heavens, the Lord's love embraces the earth, preserving our life in the midst of trouble. Please join in our opening prayer. We turn to you, O Lord, for we have learned the folly of putting our trust in earthly rulers. They promise peace, justice for our children, yet they take from us and make them run before war's chariots. Now, O Lord, we put our trust in you, Assured that if we seek your justice, we will receive it, that if we seek your peace, we shall find it. A peace other rulers can neither give nor take away. Amen. Our scripture readings are from Mark chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, on page 37 and Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6, and verses 13 through 18, page 577. A reading from the book of the Gospel of Mark. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had withered hand. They were watching him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to them, it is lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill. But they were silent. He looked around them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. 
Psalm 139, verse 1 to 6 through 6, 13 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is in my, on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high so that I cannot attain it, for it was you who formed my inner parts. You knit together in my woman's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them act as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. And children's time with Allison Marsh. Come on over. Hi, good morning. How are you? Do you like to come to church? Yeah. Good. Yeah, so do I. Church time is a time to focus on God, right? And be quiet and, and peaceful and, and, and don't disrupt anything, right? Because we, we worship, we pray, and we just, we just, we just, be very quiet, right? Wait, 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 wait. You know what? I, I need a Band-Aid. Do you have a Band-Aid? I think I do. I might have to stop the service for a minute. I've got, I do. Can you help me put a Band-Aid on, please? I need a Band-Aid. I have to stop things. Would you help me put the Band-Aid on? Yeah, yeah thanks. Right here. Yeah. Can you open it up some more? Yeah, you know how a band aid works, don't you? Uh huh. She does. Um, and put, put it, it on. Put, put it, yeah, put it on there. Can, okay. Um, okay. Oh. Yeah, that, good. Uh, oh. Woo. Thank you so much. Do you need a band aid? Yeah. No? Because I have extra band aids if you need some. You need one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Thanks. I want, um, it's, I'm a. A mosquito bite? Okay. Is it itch? Mm -hmm. Do you want a Band-Aid? Mm -hmm. I thought so. All right, good. Okay. I know. Okay. I'll put it on. Oh, good. Okay. <coughs> Thanks. I got one on my back, too, and my... Uh, one on your back, too? A mosquito bite on your back? And... And your neck. Which one itches? This one looks like it itches. We'll put a band-aid on that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Now back to worshiping, right? <sighs> Sorry for the disruption. Was that okay to stop and help somebody? I think so. I mean, I needed help to put that band-aid on. I couldn't put it on myself. Was it okay to stop and help? Yep. 
Jesus helps us all the time, doesn't he? Wherever we need it, even on a Sunday. How do we show Jesus that we love him? Do you know how? I, by helping other people, right? Right? And praying and reading the Bible and singing. Yeah, you got a Band-Aid now. There you go. <laughs> Hey, I know another way to, to, to show Jesus that I loved him. Do you know how to sign the sign for love? Hey, look up here for a minute. Have you seen that before? Here's a, here it is on a piece of paper there I got for you. The sign for love. I do. I have two. I cut it. I cut it. At, well, I don't want that kind of shows you where the, your arms go and that shows where the arms are. But you can cut it at home if you want. The sign for love. Isn't that nice? Another way to tell Jesus we love him. Uh-oh, she got two. I'll take one because I need another one. Yeah, just hand me the one. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Want to be fair here. So that's the sign for love. We can all do that too. We can kind of, if we can't, if we don't have the words, sometimes we don't have the words and, and Jesus, and God knows what, we're, what we mean, right? But sometimes we just want to sign the sign for love. All right, well, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to save us. We need your help, and we need each other. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right, well, <clears throat> we, uh, we bump into people all the time, uh, tons of people, in fact, uh, strangers and acquaintances. Uh, our paths cross almost daily. The barista at your favorite coffee shop, the mechanic working on your car, the lab partner in biology, the, the teller in the bank, the receptionist at the doctor's office, those quirky people you see at the grocery store, uh, parents you make small talk with at the ballpark. And, and these everyday people, these unremarkable encounters, can have a profound effect on our health, on our happiness, and the success that we have in life. At least that's what it says in the book, uh, Consequential Strangers, the power of people who, who don't seem to matter but really do. And the author documents all the ways that strangers and acquaintances can affect our lives. How a, a friendly greeting can change our outlook. How a, a simple service can, can improve the quality of our lives. How casual conversations can lead to a new job or a new romance. How, how someone from another ethnic or social group can expand our horizons. How a fender bender can prompt a spiritual journey. In today's passage, we meet one of these consequential strangers, someone who didn't seem to matter to anyone except Jesus. People who are a part of everyday world, a part of our everyday world, who, who we likely don't, don't know or have barely noticed. Now, following Jesus is not just for our own sake but it's for the sake of others too. And, and we hopefully have, have learned that when we do good, uh, life is good. And so keeping the Sabbath uh, was a distinguishing mark of God's people during the time of this reading today. 
of all the spiritual activities a devout Jew might engage in, such as prayer, giving alms, fasting, observing the holy days, the, the most common and obvious one was Sabbath observance. It was a day of worship and rest for, for being, not doing. And therefore, no one worked, no work was allowed on the Sabbath. Uh, so, so as the story opens, Jesus is, is doing what every devout person would be doing on that day, going to a worship service. What about today? What, what, would, distinguish, what would be a distinguishing mark of God's people today? Probably going to church, uh, maybe Sunday school or a Bible study. But, but is church, Sunday school, and a Bible study, study the attendance of those and an accurate understanding of Christianity, uh, what, what that's all about? Uh, is that what Jesus had in mind when he told us to be salt and light in the world? Well, the next thing we're, we're told is that there was this man with a withered hand in the synagogue that day. And chances are he was there every Sabbath day. Remember, this is a local synagogue serving a small community, not many visitors. It would have been the same people sitting in the same seats week after week. And so we're not told the, man, the man's details of his life, the um, um, physical condition, whether this was a disability that he was had since birth, or, or the result of an accident, perhaps an injury later in life. We don't know. But his connection was not a secret to, to, to anyone, or his condition, rather, was not a, a, a mystery to anyone in the synagogue. It would have been obvious every time that the, the men lifted their hands in prayer in the customary fashion. Chances are they had gotten so used to seeing this man that they didn't even notice him anymore. And we're also told that Jesus' critics were present that day. Jesus had only been, been uh, ministering for a short period of time, but he had already made some significant enemies. These relig religious leaders were, were looking for something to pin on him. They were hoping that Jesus would, would heal the injured man so they could accuse him of breaking the Sabbath. Healing was work. The Pharisees had decided this. And work was not allowed on the Sabbath. The law did not allow, or did allow exceptions for this in cases of emergency. But this was not an emergency. The man had lived with this condition for a long time. He certainly could have lived with it for another day. When Jesus asked this man to stand up, these leaders must have been licking their chops. He had fallen right into their trap. Why did Jesus ask this guy to stand up? He wanted people to see this man. Not just to see him, but to look at him, to pay attention to him, to think about his condition. Now again, people had probably gotten used to seeing him around, and they didn't notice him anymore. They didn't stop to think about his condition. In, in, in that time, it's, it's likely they thought his condition was the result of some sin that either he or his parents had committed, so, so they stopped seeing him. But Jesus wanted them to look again, to see what he saw. So he had the man stand up in front of everyone. And looking at the man, Jesus saw two things. First, he saw the man's withered hand was a problem for him. It made it more difficult for him to, to make a living. It would have limited him in his activities at home and with his family. And because of the social and spiritual stigmas, it, might, it made him something of an outcast. And while most people were looking the other way, Jesus was looking deeper, thinking about that man's life experience. Now, the second thing Jesus saw was the man's potential. He recognized this man was, was created in the image of God, to glorify God. That's not immediately obvious in this passage. But if we read Matthew's account of, of this encounter, 
he includes some additional words Jesus spoke. If any of you has a sheep and it's fallen into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a human being than a sheep? Jesus saw everything that this man was meant to be and to do, and he wanted him to be able to do those things. He wants to remove this disability and the stigma that went with it. And when Jesus looked at people, he looked long enough to see their problems and their potential and what it could be like if, if the kingdom of God were to come to them. Now, for the purposes of today, doing good begins right there. Seeing people as Jesus sees them. Doing good is not really about deeds. Rather, it's about people. Doing good is not about following rules. It's about relating to people in Christ-like ways. And that begins with seeing people. There's this movie, uh, I believe it's called The Soloist, uh, where Robert Downey Jr. plays a newspaper reporter who stumbles upon this homeless man playing a violin in a city park. And at first he's, he's amused by this stranger, but then he notices that this man is making this beautiful music on a violin that has two strings. And he begins to asking questions of, and, and, and learns that this man's name is Nathaniel. He keeps asking questions and he discovers that Nathaniel has a talent. He has studied at Juilliard. Nathaniel has a story, a mother who believed in him, a father who left home, a vo and, and these voices in his head that he just couldn't silence. Most importantly, he learns that Nathaniel has dignity. Nathaniel needs friendship, not charity. Everyone we meet has a name, has a story. Every human being has a talent and a dignity and a worth. There are no inconsequential strangers. Everyone matters. They matter to God, and they'll matter to us if we take the time to see their problems and their potential. Now, understand that this is not about feeling sorry for people, nor is it about the down and outers. Take this guy with the, the withered hand. There's, there's no indication that his life was miserable or unhappy. He's not a beggar. He's, he's able to worship with his community. His, his life is just not all that it could be, and Jesus wants to do something about it. Seeing people as Jesus sees them simply means thinking about what life is like for them and what it could be like if the kingdom were to come to them. What might their days, uh, what, might, what might make their days a little bit easier or better or more like what God has in mind for them? When, we, when you start looking at people that way, there are no ordinary people. There are no unremarkable encounters. Now, having seen this man with the withered hand, Jesus couldn't just walk away. He wanted to do something to, to help the man, not just for the man's sake, but for the people's sake. He wanted the people to understand what, really, uh, what it really meant to be God's people uh, in, in, a, in, in the world and what God is looking for from people who call themselves his followers. So Jesus asks this provocative question. And by the way, <clears throat> If you haven't realized it, Jesus is a troublemaker, <laughs> only in the best of ways. He didn't have, a, have to perform the healing right there and then. It, it wasn't a life or death situation, as we've said. It, it certainly could have waited until sundown when there, was, when there would have been no controversy. But Jesus couldn't resist this teachable moment. In fact, this is the only time that Jesus initiates a healing without being prompted first. So after making the man stand up, he, he, he posed a question to the congregation. 
and to his critics in particular, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill. Now Jesus is challenging the Pharisees' understanding, not just of what the Sabbath is all about, but of what God is all about. And the Sabbath was God's day. So they figured that it ought to be about things that God cares about, like prayer, worship, and keeping the rules. The point is that these people thought they knew what God cared about. Religious things like prayer, uh, Bible reading, and, and worship and attendance. Uh, so that's, that's what they determined the Sabbath was supposed to be about. But Jesus wants them to understand that the things God really cares about is people and their well-being and their happiness, their wholeness. That's why he gave them the Sabbath in the first place. So, of course, it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. In fact, doing good is what the Sabbath is all about. I think there's an important lesson here for us. Not about what we can do or not do on a Sunday morning. It's it's about what God wants from His people. About uh, what it means for us to be Christian. It turns out that what God wants isn't a lot of religious activity. God wants us to be about God's work in the world. And God wants us to care about the things that God cares about so that we can be God's hands and feet to the consequential strangers that we bump into every day. Doing good is one of the most Christ-like, God-honoring things that we can do, even though it may not look, may not always look, very spiritual. So there's this church in New Jersey that goes by the name of Liquid Church. And they believe that church ought to be fluid rather than solid, like living water that flows freely into people's lives and satisfies deep thirst. The liquid church found themselves disturbed by the fact that tens of thousands of people, children mainly, die every day simply because they don't have clean water to drink. And so they they were pretty sure God cared about that too. So they decided to do something about it. And one of the things that they decided to do was to do church differently on a Sunday. So instead of holding services in the church building, they decided that they were going to hold a 5K race in town to raise money for for wells in Ethiopia. And they did it on a Sunday morning because they knew that's when people from town would most likely be able to participate. So they they ended up with over 1,200 runners, 80% of whom were not believers. And they raised $250,000, which ended up saving about 60,000 lives. What do we think about that? Which is lawful on a Sunday? To hold services or to hold a race? To be religious or to do good? Our good deeds don't have to look exactly like what the liquid church chose to do. The point is to to, to take a fresh look at what it means to be God's people in the world. To ask ourselves, what is it that we as Christians want to be known for? To start seeing people and the world the way that Jesus sees people and the world. And then do do for, for them the kind of things that Jesus would do even if those things don't look very religious. In James chapter 1, verse 27, it puts it like this. Uh, religion that God, uh, that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. In this morning's scripture, In front of everyone, Jesus said, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out, and it was completely restored. Now, if we notice here, Jesus never actually works on the Sabbath. 
He doesn't rub the man's arm. He doesn't make a a paste uh, or some sort of lotion. He doesn't lift a finger. All he does is say, stretch out your hand. And when the man does, his arm is healed and his life takes a turn for the better. Remember, this wasn't a a life or death situation uh, for the man. This man wasn't miserable or lost so far as we can, can tell. But when Jesus saw the man, he couldn't resist doing something good for him, something that would bless him. We also learn doing good means seeing people as Jesus sees them and finding a way to bless them. To bless someone is to confer well-being on them. It is to say or to do something that improves the person's lot in life. Blessing people is something we can all do. All right, so if we're being honest, uh, we're not Jesus, right? We can't heal people when they're sick, but we can bless them by bringing over a hot meal or driving them to a doctor's appointment. We can't, bring be, we can't bring back someone's loved one, but we can bless them by listening with, with our ears and some words of remembrance. We can't multiply loaves and fishes, but we can bless someone with a bag of groceries or a dinner invitation or a gift to a, a relief agency. We can't save people or fix people or, or undo people's foolish decisions but we can bless them in all sorts of ways if we'll take the time to see them and think about them. Working to find a way to to make someone's life easier, happier, uh, closer to what God has in mind for them. There's a, a vineyard church in Cincinnati that specializes in this kind of ministry. And they have have found all kinds of simple and surprising ways to bless people uh, of their city. And so they hand out water bottles on hot summer days. They they get their small groups together and go door to door and rake people's front yards for free. They go to gas stations and small businesses and they clean their bathrooms so the employees don't have to. They go to lower income neighborhoods and they hand out bags of groceries or little boxes of detergent. On Christmas Eve, they deliver donuts to people who have to work. And when it feels right, they ask the people if there's anything in their lives that they would like prayer about. Members of the congregation carry these little connection cards around with them with a a simple message like, This is to to let you know that God loves you. And when they go through, say, a McDonald's drive-thru, they pay for the person's meal behind them, and they ask the cashier to give them the little card. They tried to to offer car-free car washes, but people were too proud or suspicious to pull in. And so now they offer $1 car washes. And when the driver rolls down their window to pay, they hand the driver a dollar bill and tell tell them that God loves them. Now, we may think that these are, are silly little things to do. And you may think that these little activities don't sound very religious or or very Christian. But after years of this, it's hard to find anyone in Cincinnati who hasn't heard of the Vineyard Church and, and been blessed in one of those simple ways. A pastor by the name of Dave Workman was doing an outreach with a youth group from another church. And the youth pastor he was working with told him how he used to be a drug addict and lived a wild and reckless life. But he kept bumping into people who gave him free water or washed his car or bought him a cup of coffee. Four times it happened. He hung, a, hung on to one of those connect cards and he carried it around in his pocket for months and finally one Sunday he dropped in and he eventually would come to faith and began doing good for others uh, the way that the others had done good to him and he got so addicted to doing good that he quit his real job and he became a pastor 
Well, you don't have to quit your job and, uh, to do good. In fact, you'll probably have more opportunities to do good on, on the job than you would ever have as a pastor. You don't need to, to know your Bible inside and out uh, to do good. You don't have to have a lot of money to give away. You don't have to be an extrovert. All you have to do is open your eyes to people and the situations around you. Take the time to see what Jesus sees. And then get creative. Find a way to bless people and leave the rest to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, we're going to sing Leave It There. It's on page 522. Uh, and then it will also be... Nope, am I on the right song? Nope. We're going to sing Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. That's on page 462. Like... All right, you may be seated. You're going to want to turn to page 13 of the purple hymnal uh, and follow along. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing that we celebrate communion. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, I gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in our holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would those who are assisting with communion please come forward? As I've said before, um, we as United Methodists have what is known as an open table. And what that simply means is that all are welcome to, to, to God's table. So if you feel so, please come forward for Holy Communion.
All right, at this time we would share our tithes and offerings. Would those who are assisting with that please come forward? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for all the blessings that you impart on us. Uh, In this moment, we thank you for the opportunity to share our tithes and offerings. Lord, as we do so, we just ask that you would give us hearts and minds for the work that you would have us do, that you would give us guidance in, in, in where it is that you would see most fit for us to use the tithes and offerings. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated.
But this time we would share our joys, concerns, and silent angels. That's any, uh, anywhere we've seen people in action and, and being helpful. Uh, so if you have any of that, if you just raise your hands, we'll get you a mic. All right. You don't have to do that. But. What, you don't like the dancing? Oh, it's lovely. Eh? <laughs> Wobbly guy. <laughs> um, again, uh, 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 echoing Mary, I uh, want to thank everyone that came out for her 80th birthday party yesterday. Um, really can't put anything on like that unless the the community and the, the people around it, you know, come together for it. And it was really a great time. Um, we're all exhausted from late night of gaming. Um, you can't get that family together without some dominoes flying somewhere. And uh, they were flying last night. <laughs> Hopefully but not at each other. That's kind of part of the game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, but uh, Debbie wanted to thank everyone that came and those, everyone that helped us put it on and get it done. And uh, it was great that we got to spend a, a few hours with Dr. Jones and his wife while they came, flew in to surprise grandma. And uh, now we got to get them back on the plane and going back that way. So mm. it was a great day and thank you, thank you everyone, appreciate it. Well, I wanted to tell some of you who may not know this, Lila's been in the hospital for about four days. Um, she had so much water she had built up after she had that operation from before, and she told her to go to the hospital, and they kept her there. The first day, she lost 10 pounds of water, mm. and more the next day, so she'll probably be taking water pills for a while, but she's... She's doing fine, except that she also, her uh, AFib came back when she had the operation. And so tomorrow they're going to shock her to see if they can get it to go back somewhere else. And so she won't have that because she'll breathe a lot easier if she gets all that water out of her lungs and stuff and then gets that heart beating again, she'll be normal again, we hope. So I appreciate the thoughts and prayers that they gave for her, and uh, she's going she's gonna to be all right, I think. Got an update from my brother. He called me on my birthday Friday. Wish me happy birthday. Um, he had hip surgery and it went very well and he was dismissed early from his therapy because he's so good about doing it at home. And he told me he's gonna do it for a year because the doctor said he compensated so much for the bad hip that his ligaments and muscles and <clears throat> tendons were out of line. So he's working real hard to get back. But he's helping his son on the farm and doing really well. As you may know, he has mental cell lymphoma, but it's in uh, arrest uh, right now. So we appreciate the prayers that you gave for that. Um, he also told me that his uh, niece, Natalie Manzo, 18 years old, was in a head-on car accident last week, and uh, she's broken three ribs, has an air pocket between her lung and the lining, and has broken her jaw in four places. She had no cavities and has lost some teeth as a result of that accident. So she needs a lot of prayers. Uh, just graduated from high school. So it's a rough go for that young lady. So prayers for her, please. Um, also, our um, niece, Selena, 46 years old, who's expecting a baby for the first time. She's doing very well. All the tests are showing she's uh, going to have a healthy baby. And mama's doing good, other than being very tired. It's uh, usually the, it's pretty hard on somebody that's in their 40s having a baby for the first time. So anyway, <laughs> lastly, there's goodies left over in the kitchen. So on your way out, if you want to take some cookies and fruit or whatever, just help yourself. I'll be there and help you out. Thank you. 
I'd like to thank everyone who donated to um, the love offering. I will be taking $700 out to Santa Fe Trail High School on Tuesday to help cover some lunch money. If anyone missed that um, and would like to donate, I'd be happy to take that out on Tuesday also. So again, $700, that was a match between what you all put in the basket plus what we have in the quarters of kindness. So um, our quarter of kindness fund is depleted down to about $30. So there always is the tube in the back if you'd like to donate. All right, anyone else this morning? Thank you. Uh, I would just ask for prayers for um, clergy and laity traveling uh, at the, this week up to Kearney, Nebraska uh, for our annual conference that'll be going on. I think they have meetings that are starting as early as tomorrow, but then the, the core group meets um, Thursday through Sunday, so uh, it's a little different than in years past, but, but uh, just prayers for safe travels and, 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 and for that event. Um, all right, well, let's take a moment for personal silent prayer. Lord, you are a loving and giving God, and we thank you for all that you do in our lives. Um, Lord, as you've heard this morning through our vocal and, and, and personal prayers, uh, there's a lot of things that, that happen that are unexpected. Uh, and Lord, we just lift up those who are, are dealing with the unexpected, uh, at, whether that be uh, going into the hospital and having to have uh, water taken off and, and a, a, an AFib done, whether that is uh, being in an accident and, and uh, you know, having ribs broken and air pockets and just all the jaw broke and four places and lost teeth, just not, not good. Um, you know, uh, a blessing and yet, 46 years old having a baby is not a, an easy thing to do either lord and, and and you've heard all the silent prayers that go along with that and so so uh lord we just we we lift up those individuals we lift up anybody who's dealing with issues centered around health uh whether that be physical or mental we just ask that you would give peace and healing where that is to be had we lift up those who are are dealing with issues of loss lord whether that's uh, loss of a, a loved one or loss of a relationship or just whatever way that loss happens to come, that you would be with those individuals, that you would shelter them and, and give them strength to, to take next steps. Um, Lord, we thank you for birthdays and anniversaries and time together and, 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 and just being with family, uh, just being able to celebrate uh, this time of year uh, with cookouts and, and camping trips and, 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 and just the changing of, of the colors out there and new flowers and green grass at the moment and just all of that that, that, that you've created that is such a blessing to us. We thank you for that. Uh, Lord, we also ask today that you would hear us as we pray together, as your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. Well, now we're going to sing the song, Leave It There, which is on page 522. 
Uh, if you're able and would like to, would you please rise? Gloom, despair, and agony on me. That's what that song makes me think of. <laughs> uh, sorry, I shouldn't share the thoughts that come into my head sometimes, I guess. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I absolutely love that song, but when I was over in Linden, the gloom, despair song came to me, and, and uh, you know, you can't, you can't beat hee-haw. You can't beat it can't beat it. Um, Anyway, sorry. Uh, As we prepare to go forth today, may God's blessings of peace and love and hope and joy be with each and every one of you. Uh, And as we go forth today, may we observe the world around us and those people around us. And as we see individuals out there, may we be that and more for them that they might uh, receive a little bit of Christ through us. Amen? Amen? Amen.